Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Uriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of the District of Columbia. And I want to make a, a few brief comments about uh, the district's preparations for public safety for this evening uh, and the next. Uh, but I first want to say uh, something I said a little bit earlier that I hope all DC residents are listening to. And that is that smashing windows and looting should not be the story, uh, but racial justice and healing uh, should be the story. And I think that the way that we can uh, demonstrate that uh, tonight uh, is to make sure that what were peaceable protests don't continue to descend uh, to destruction uh, in our beautiful city uh, and neighborhoods. Earlier today, I extended a curfew in the District of Columbia. Uh, that curfew will begin at 7 p.m. this evening and run to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Likewise, tomorrow, the curfew will begin at 7 p.m. Uh, and run through 6 a.m. the following morning. I want to implore DC residents to stay at home, to only uh, go out for essential work, uh, and to keep you and your family safe by doing so. I also want uh, to uh, want it to be clear to everyone uh, is that if you are out, uh, then you are subject to be stopped uh, and or arrested. So it's very important uh, that you stay at home. I also uh, want to let you know that the chief in uh, Metropolitan Police Department continue uh, to do uh, the excellent work of, of planning uh, to protect the city uh, during this First Amendment activity, but also uh, to arrest those who break our laws. Uh, we will continue to be supported uh, by, the, uh, by our federal partners as we are uh, in all cases in the District of Columbia. Uh, we have been asked questions about exemptions from the curfew, especially as it relates to tomorrow's primary uh, in Washington, D.C. And I want to be very clear that voting is exempted from the curfew, so you can continue to go to the polls after 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, if you are working a poll, um, you may continue to do that work uh, in to get home. Uh, the polls close tomorrow uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, and the polls are open right now uh, and they're gonna be open all day tomorrow. So continue to exercise your vote uh, in, in the primary. If you have a mail-in ballot, of course, uh, you wanna use that mail-in ballot uh, by putting uh, it in the mail. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn to uh, our Chief of Police, Peter Newsham, uh, followed by the Chairman of the Council, Phil Mendelson, and the Attorney General for the District of Columbia, Carl Racine. Uh, thanks again, Mayor Bowser. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, currently, we have uh, two separate groups of peaceful demonstrators. Uh, one is in the area of Lafayette Square. Uh, the other one is in the area, uh, as I came into the room, of the U.S. Capitol. Uh, they have been peaceful since they assembled around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I want to reemphasize uh, what the mayor said so it's uh, completely clear uh, as a warning uh, to the residents of the District of Columbia. Uh, we have a curfew that will be in effect uh, beginning at 7 p.m. Uh, the people that are exempted are obviously essential workers, uh, people who need to vote for that first hour uh, and uh, we want to ensure that uh, give the community some sense is what they will see from the Metropolitan Police Department uh, is they will see police officers uh, visually uh, giving warnings over the PA systems uh, for anybody that's out. Uh, there may be a requirement for people who are out after seven o'clock uh, that we check credentials to ensure uh, that they not that they are essential uh, or a member of the media, or they're out there to vote. Those are the three exceptions. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, everybody has their eyes wide open. Uh, we have gotten questions uh, regarding uh, what may be happen happening in the neighborhoods with regards uh, to the, some of the destruction that we saw over the last couple of days. Uh, I want our community to rest assured uh, that we have plenty of police resources available in the neighborhoods to respond in the event uh, that something occurs in their community. Uh, so I want to urge uh, our residents uh, that are out here, uh, please, 7 o'clock tonight, 
uh, stay in, uh, let us do our job, uh, let us uh, be able to uh, find the people that are responsible uh, who seem hell-bent on destroying our city. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Chief uh, Newsom. Uh, I'm, I am here uh, representing the council to stand with the mayor and the chief of police because I think that's an important message to send. You know, it's an unfortunate time in our country. The focus on racial justice is a very, very important focus. And it's unfortunate that the, the violence that we've seen the last couple of nights, uh, not just here but across the country, distracts from that important message. And so that's become much more of a preoccupation and it's regrettable. Uh, I uh, stand with the mayor, the council stands with the mayor and the chief to um, ensure that we continue with order in the district and to respect as well uh, the right of individuals to raise this very important message and to, uh, to resist being distracted. Uh, I also want to say that uh, I appreciate the work that the uh, Metropolitan Police Department has done and part of the reason why I can appreciate the work that they've done is that they've had many years of experience working with civil demonstrations and understanding how to work with crowds so that they are a calming influence rather than an agitating influence. And that is so important and we're seeing where that makes a difference in other cities that may not be as well trained. Um, and I am hopeful that that will continue as we see that there are additional, what do we call them, assets that are uh, in the city uh, because uh, MPD has done a good job and they should continue to uh, take the lead. The one other message I want to uh, convey, uh, because this is a concern from all council members, is that we have the curfew, we also have election day tomorrow, and that uh, those who want to vote and are not able to vote until after seven o'clock in the evening can still vote and get to the polls as long as the polls are open, which is until eight o'clock tomorrow. It's most important that everybody votes. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you, Chairman Mendelson, and thank you, Chief, uh, and the, for the, all the work of the Metropolitan Police Department uh, in this, uh, you know, really tragic week. Uh, certainly, understand the anger, the frustration, uh, the impatience uh, for a lack of change uh, around the country. And protesters have been told sometimes how they should not protest. Colin Kaepernick, we were talking earlier, um, got down on one knee in a peaceful way and was told that that wasn't allowed. And so people are confused about what's right and what's wrong. But what we do know is that we have a beautiful city, a city that has its challenges but cares about its people. Uh, and if we respect that city, we can find a way to direct the protest in a manner that really uplifts the entire city. Um, so I urge everyone to do that which Mayor Bowser and the chief uh, have really emphasized, and that is to stay at home uh, between the hours at 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. and do so over the next few days. Uh, they want to lift this curfew as soon as possible, um, but we really need each other to just stay home and allow the peace to, uh, to take over our city again. Thank you. Uh, we are available for a few questions. I do also just want to mention quickly, uh, earlier I mentioned that if you have a vehicle uh, in the downtown below uh, K Street, it's uh, a good idea to move that vehicle. If we find it necessary to move the vehicle, we will move the vehicle. So uh, if you have a vehicle, please think about moving your vehicle. Okay, any, yes. Hey, Bowser. Uh, other cities instituted a curfew earlier yesterday uh, and in previous days as well. Uh, Philadelphia, for example, 6 p.m. Do you think that that was a mistake having the curfew start at 11 last night and that that led to any of the chaos that we saw afterwards? Um, well, what we saw is uh, peace-loving people uh, who were protesting leave at 11. Um, some left uh, before 11. Uh, and so the, the police knew that there were a lot of people there who were hell-bent on destruction, uh, no matter what time the curfew was. And uh, we, we know uh, today that our, our strategy is to get 
um, the curfew in place um, before seven so we can separate those who want uh, to be peaceable and those who do not. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Mayor Bowser, the president on the call with governors today suggested that he was going to pull thousands of people into D.C. And what's the second one? Uh, if you don't dominate your city and your state, they're going to walk away with you. We're going to do it in Washington. In D.C., we are going to do something people haven't seen before. You know what that's about? Uh, well, I, I think we, we've heard very clearly from the president that he has an interest in um, bringing more assets to cities and states across the country. Uh, and we are, have uh, been in communication with federal authorities. We will continue to work with our federal partners. Uh, we do expect uh, that there will be uh, more federal assets, as they say, deployed uh, in or around the District of Columbia. And uh, our focus um, and what we uh, think would be important for those additional assets would be on federal properties and the monuments and memorials. Karen, this might be a better question for, for Chief Newsom. Is there any additional information on intelligence about the, the kinds of people that caused the trouble last night sure. and any coordinated effort? who they are, where they're coming from. So I, I talked about that a little bit this morning. And so uh, our sense is that this is organized. Uh, I think as we move forward into the future, we're, and as we're able to gather additional intelligence regarding the people that are involved, uh, the organizations that they belong to, it will probably lead to information uh, to if there is, in fact, a group out there that has organized this. Uh, I think that uh, what we need to con keep consider, uh, particularly in law enforcement, uh, is not only to ensure uh, that we can restore safety uh, going into this evening and into the future, but make sure it doesn't uh, reoccur. And I think that if there are people in our country uh, that are organizing uh, to destroy our cities, uh, you know, without regard to uh, human safety, uh, when you light fires, uh, when you throw bricks at human beings, uh, you're putting everybody uh, in jeopardy. Uh, and so if there are people that are out there that are purposely organizing to do this, we have a responsibility to identify those folks uh, and bring them into uh, to, to justice. The last piece of this, and this is a piece that's re very important to us, and I think that will be effective in assisting us in this, is that uh, we are going to have a lot of images. We're going to ask uh, our, our colleagues, uh, our, I guess I wouldn't call them colleagues, but our friends in the media uh, to share images that you have, because I know you have a lot of them, of people who are involved uh, in illegal behavior in our community, uh, so we can get those people identified, uh, so we can ensure that we don't have something like this uh, happen again. Uh, we have, I mentioned this this morning too, we will be offering up to a $1,000 reward uh, to people who identify the folks in those images. Uh, going back to federal government assets that might come in. So Attorney General Barr mentioned sending uh, riot teams to Washington. Are you concerned that this might exacerbate tensions on the ground with uh, protesters, many of whom do not like the Trump administration, who are seeing the Trump administration deploy, uh, deploy military personnel in D.C.? Uh, I, I'm concerned about all the conflicts between people and law enforcement um, because we we know that our officers, our officers and the federal officers are there uh, to do a job and uh, to make sure that there can be a First Amendment demonstration without anybody getting hurt. And so we've seen a lot of conflicts between people uh, and the police over the last several days. I will say uh, that I know the values of uh, the Metropolitan Police Department. I know uh, that our officers know our expectations of them. Uh, and they know how to work with our community. Uh, and they know that they are accountable to the chief and to me uh, and to independent bodies uh, in this government for how they behave. Uh, we, we can't always say those same things about uh, other entities that aren't more part of the district system. Um, so yes, that makes me concerned. Have you been pushing back uh, with the White House as they've been floating these plans for more federal assets? Are you telling them what you would like to see and what you wouldn't like to see? Uh, very definitely. We ha we recognize um, that federal assets could be helpful uh, for the monuments and memorials. Along those lines, it seemed like last night the D.C. National Guard, we didn't see much of them until the very end. Was that a strategy to try to ratchet down some of the tensions? No. Thank you.
Well, who's, whose call is it when the National Guard comes in? Is that up to Chief Newsham? Is, are you coordinating with him? Uh, no, it's up to me um, in conjunction with the Chief's needs. And uh, our request to the Guard um, went out earlier in the day. Uh, and the Guard uh, was definitely uh, very present uh, at, at the White House and at Lafayette Square. And so uh, this evening, as we'll go into it, uh, there, there are some kind of traffic management things um, as, as we are, well, um, I won't say more than that. What's your response to this message from the president saying that telling mayors and governors that you have to use overwhelming force, you have to show domination of your jurisdiction? Let, let me, I, I obviously don't agree with that type of language, Bennett, but this is where our interests are the same keeping Washington, D.C. safe in every part of Washington, D.C., from the White House to Lafayette Square to the Lincoln Memorial to Jefferson Memorial, all the way up to Shepherd Park and Colonial Village, where I live, over to Anacostia in the Chevy Chase. It's all Washington, D.C., and it has to be safe, period. We saw an incredible amount of destruction last night and over the last two nights. Do you think that strategy worked? I think that we had people that were bent on destruction, uh, and let me be clear, we were able to get our hands on quite a few of them, and they were arrested, uh, and I, the, our message here, and the whole reason why we're here right now is to make sure that everybody understands what it means to have a curfew. That means you have to stay home, and if you aren't at home, you're subject to stop and arrest. So let us, let these police officers do their jobs, uh, and we are going to get our, our city back to normal just as soon as we can, but we need the districts and our residents' cooperation right now. A lot of people are asking us things like dog walking after 7. Is, is that okay? I want everybody to use common sense and good judgment. So is it common sense to not walk your dog tonight, or is it common sense to think, oh, the police aren't going to stop you just for walking your dog? The police are interested in people who are destroying our city. So it's fair to say the curfew enforcement is going to be around the area of uh, unrest? It will be where it's necessary. But okay. Thank not, you, everybody. I'm sorry. Aren't just going to show up to Shepherd Park. I can't hear you. But police aren't just going to go to neighborhoods that aren't experiencing unrest to make sure everyone's complying with Well, you might have thought that they didn't have anything going on in Tinley Town, right? It's not close to the White House. Turns out it was uh, something going on, and police responded. So I can't say... Uh, you know, we have a target in Shepherd Park. So you, you show up at the target in Shepherd Park and you mean to loot and steal, create mayhem, you're going to get arrested. 